We have a, a number of people who will, will speak today, nine, including me, and we thank you for coming. <clears throat> we'll try to be brief, and then if you'll hold your questions till the end, we'll try to answer answer all of them, because some may be answered as we as we go along. We'll start with John Quayarello from the National Weather Service. John. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. afternoon. Florence has begun, um, undergone rapid intensification and was upgraded to a Category 4 hurricane with wind speeds of 130 miles per hour around midday today. The hurricane's wind field is expected to grow with time as it approaches the coast of the Carolinas. The forecast track from the National Hurricane Center has not changed significantly and is still expected to be a large and extremely dangerous hurricane when it makes landfall. While the track shows landfall across southeast North Carolina, it is very important to remember a couple of things. One, don't focus on the landfall location depicted in the Hurricane Center forecast. Instead, look at the cone of uncertainty, which shows where the center of the hurricane is likely to go two-thirds of the time. This means the hurricane can still make landfall along portions of the northern or central portions of the South Carolina coast. Two, the cone does not at all imply where impacts from the hurricane will occur. In fact, impacts will extend far from the center of Florence. For example, tropical storm force winds could extend well over 100 miles from the center of the storm, and hurricane force winds could extend 50 miles from the center of the storm, putting much of the state, even well inland, at risk for destructive winds. As for timing, the tropical storm force winds will arrive well in advance of landfall, likely sometime Thursday morning, at which time all preparations should be completed. Landfall along the Carolina coast looks to occur late Thursday or Thursday night. Life-threatening storm surge is likely along portions of the coastline in association with Florence. This is in addition to the high surf and deadly rip current risk, which will continue through the week. Once Florence moves inland, is it expected to weaken and move very slowly, resulting in a prolonged and exceptionally heavy rainfall event along and north of the track. Depending on where the heaviest rain occurs, this could result in significant river flooding across portions of the state into next week. This could be the first Category 4 hurricane to make landfall in the Carolinas since Hugo. Please follow the advice of local emergency management officials for evacuation information. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'd like to point out that we are expecting more wind than we had with Hugo and more water than we had with Matthew. And the soil is, is moist, in some places is saturated, and that means that all of this water that's going to be coming in on this very high velocity hurricane, which is right now is moving and we expect to move slowly across the ground when it gets here, it'll be dumping water on us in North Carolina, all of which will come flow through South Carolina, much of what is in North Carolina. So we're liable to have a whole lot of flooding, particularly in the PD area. So we got the hurricane and the surge, which may be as high as 10 feet, maybe more, maybe less, we don't know coming at us uh, from the ocean, and then after that we have water coming down, flooding us. So we, we're in for a real episode here, and what we're emphasizing, we want everybody to be prepared. Your state government, your county governments, all the volunteer organizations like Harvest Hope and Red Cross are, are in gear working, and we're get, getting them in, play, in place through my executive order and other measures that have been taken. We've got a great team. There's no team greater than the South Carolina team, but this is a real hurricane that we have coming, and our goal is to protect lives and property. Now, we know that this evacuation order that I'm issuing is going to be inconvenient for some people. It's going to be inconvenient, but we do not want to risk one South Carolina life in this hurricane, so we're willing to suffer some inconvenience. South Carolina's a great place to live. This may be inconvenient. This is a very dangerous hurricane, but we are not going to gamble with the lives of the people of South Carolina, not a one. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Three main things. Noon tomorrow, noon tomorrow, September 11th, I'm all, I have already ordered the mandatory evacuation of all people in all of the evacuation zones. And you see them there on that map. You see all those different colors. That's almost all of the counties along the coast. It affects all eight counties, and I will read them. You see those zones, and the darker the colors, 
or the, the more danger there is in those zones. There are eight counties, Jasper, Beaufort, Carleton, Charleston, Dorchester, Berkeley, Georgetown, and O'Ree. There are plenty of ways you can go online and find out exactly where your zone is. You can call the authorities, but as of noon tomorrow, I'm ordering a mandatory, not voluntary, but mandatory evacuation of everybody that is in those zones. Now, how are we going to get everybody out? We issue an order for that too. At noon tomorrow, we're going to reverse the lanes on four big roads leading from the coast. There are a lot of evacuation routes on different roads leading from the coast. And you can find them online uh, right here with the Emergency Management Division and other places as well. But there are four on which we're going to reverse the lanes so that all of the lanes will be leading out. Starting at noon tomorrow, you can't go to the coast on these roads. You've got to come away from the coast. And they are I-26 leading from Charleston all the way to Columbia will be one way, and that's away from Charleston. Highway 501 in Myrtle Beach will also be reversed, leaving Myrtle Beach, not going to Myrtle Beach. Then highways 278 and 21 in Beaufort County will be ready for reversal ready for reversal with people standing by at noon and we'll make the decision then whether to reverse at that moment or to do so later. So those are the four roads that will be reversed. I've also issued an executive order to get people out of the way and to make way for the people. It'd be a, about a million people we think will be leaving the coast trying to escape this big hurricane, about a million people. So we have to have to clear the roads and get people out of the way so these can come through. And also by closing some of these offices, the people in those offices, those state offices, can work in the emergency management capacities that they already work in. I've ordered the closing of government offices, state government offices, not county, state government offices, not municipal, but state government offices in 26 counties except for essential uh, emergency personnel. Those counties are shown in red here. There's 26 of them, and I'll read them to you. There's, and these are in alphabetical order. They are Aiken, Aiken, Allendale, and the, these offices will not be open tomorrow at all. The schools, the state offices and the schools will not be open at all tomorrow. The roads and all those evacuate, those are for 12 noon tomorrow. But these offices, state offices and schools in these counties won't open at all. Those people need to be preparing for this hurricane. Aiken, Allendale, Bamberg, Beaufort, Barnwell, Berkeley, Calhoun, Charleston, Colleton, Clarendon, Darlington, Dillon, Dorchester, Florence, Georgetown, Hampton, Ori, Jasper, Lexington, Lee, Marion, Marlboro, Orangeburg, Richland, Sumter, and Williamsburg. We don't want the school children in harm's way. We're going to have to use some of those school buses, so we have to close the schools. We're going to need some of those schools for evacuation shelters. It'll be set up, so we have to, the school has to be out. And as I say in the state offices, there are a lot of emergency personnel who work in state offices who will be on the scene tomorrow working with the team around South Carolina to keep things safe for the rest of us. The county governments will decide when and the municipal governments will decide when to close their offices. One more thing is the, I've issued the order already and it is, a, is in effect for a mandatory medical evacuation of all hospitals and medical facilities and that includes nursing homes in these areas uh, on the in the earlier map the evacuation areas evacuation zones they are they are to begin moving already we issued that order earlier today so that's that's uh, that's you have it i need to say that uh, our south carolina team is experienced they're dedicated they work enormously well together we've we've had the experience recently and i don't think anybody can do it any better than we can. But what we must remember is this hurricane is coming. Now you can't see, look out the window and see it right now from Columbia where we are. But if you were to go out there in the ocean, 
you and just uh, before long you might find winds of 155 145 miles an hour and we know it's going to hit somewhere to have a dramatic impact on South Carolina whether if it, if it hits closer to North Carolina then we still know that throughout South Carolina we'll have heavy rains we'll have heavy winds we're gonna have power lines down people we need to prepare we still have time now to prepare we urge you to do that General Livingston thank you governor uh, Team South Carolina is moving into position, uh, the, the entire team, the team you see uh, behind me and beside me, uh, to facilitate the uh, evacuation. But we're also positioning to do post-storm activities uh, that include search and rescue, evacuation, wellness checks, security, and route clearance. So uh, we are well positioned uh, with people that are already in position uh, to not only deal with the storm as it comes in, but also deal with the uh, aftermath of the storm. Uh, from the National Guard perspective, uh, we currently have 1,600 soldiers uh, on duty, and uh, that number will increase as the needs increase. Uh, we su suspect it will go well past 3,000 as we go into Wednesday. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Ms. Hall. Thank you, Governor. Currently, the South Carolina Department of Transportation has over 3,000 employees ready to deploy into the area and engage in our response and recovery operations. We are in the process of moving 35 crews specifically to the coastal area in order to be able to respond to this event. In support of the governor's evacuation order and anticipation of increased traffic on our highways, we have already extended our motorist assistance programs. Uh, our SHEP program along I-26, I-95, US-21, and US-278. We have also moved to 24-hour operations on our welcome centers and rest areas in order to provide those comfort stations for our travelers across the state. Finally, we have done an extensive planning exercise along with our partners at the Department of Public Safety to pre-identify some uh, routes for evacuees to use, I encourage you to go to the EMD website and locate the route that's closest to you and will make sense for you as you plan to evacuate. And then last but not least, again, in support of the governor's order for the evacuation, we will be lifting or suspending the tolls on the Cross Island Parkway in Hilton Head, effective noon tomorrow. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Ms. Hall. Ms. Smith. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Leroy Smith, Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. Uh, as the governor stated, we are planning for a full coastal evacuation, including the four lane reversals that the uh, governor mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, the uh, four lane reversals route, as he stated, uh, throughout the three conglomerates, southern, central, and the northern conglomerates. Uh, we are planning for a large scale evacuation. We want to maximize the use of all lanes. Uh, we're going to use an operation, as I stated earlier, called lane reversal. That means that lanes traveling, if I may focus on the uh, I-26 corridor, lanes traveling on I-26 uh, from Charleston to Columbia, both east and westbound, uh, will proceed in the same direction, heading away from the, the approaching storm. Our goal is to move as many evacuees away from the threatened area as quickly and as safely as possible. How do we implement it? We have an ingress, that's the beginning. Uh, that's where we will load the vehicles on the reverse side. And we have an egress, that's the end. That's where the vehicles will exit the reverted side. How do we clear for lane reversal? Uh, we will flush the normal traffic of the eastbound lanes of I-26 in Columbia. And when the order is given, we will divert the eastbound traffic on I-26 to either US-321 or I-77 northbound. During the flushing phase of it, uh, if your vehicle is in front of the trooper's vehicle on I-26 corridor eastbound, if your vehicle is in front of that trooper's vehicle, you get what we call a free ride or a push all the way to the Charleston area. However, if your vehicle is behind that trooper's vehicle on the I-26 eastbound corridor, <coughs> your vehicle will be diverted to either US-321 or I-77 northbound. As the trooper is flushing 
the I-26 corridor eastbound lanes. As the trooper passes an exit, we will also close that entrance ramp, restricting access to the uh, eastbound lanes of uh, I-26. We will continue this process until we get to the Charleston area, the I-526 interchange. Once we have completed that flush, working with our partners, uh, we will have aviation units to make sure that those lanes are clear. And once we've ascertained that those lanes are clear, that's when we, you will see the true highway patrol vehicles uh, entering the uh, reverted side and they will escort, if you will, uh, the motoring public from the Charleston area to the uh, Columbia area. How do we get the vehicles on the reverted side back to the regular westbound lanes of I-26? Uh, vehicles traveling, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. How do we load the uh, I-26 reverted lane on the eastbound side? Uh, in the Charleston area, if you're traveling on I-526 from the Mount Pleasant area or West Ashley area, certain of those lanes will be diverted to the reverted side. Also, Ashley Phosphate, US 78, as well as College Park Road, we could also load the reverted side from those interchanges. How do those vehicles return back to the normal lanes once we get to the Columbia area? Uh, traffic on the normal westbound side of I-26, that's your normal traffic, they will be diverted to I-77 northbound. And just west of that I-77-26 interchange, there's a crossover. The vehicles on the reverted side will enter the crossover and back to the regular westbound lanes of I-26. So we have three lanes on the reverted side exchanging in two, three lanes on the normal side so we don't interrupt the flow of traffic. Emergency services along the I-26 uh, uh, lane reversal route we have the National Guard uh, with there with their uh, vehicle recovery teams. That's a Humvee and uh, sorry, a wrecker with two Humvees. Their job is to uh, keep the, the, the roadways clear uh, to move the vehicles from the uh, main travel portion of the roadway. EMS and fire, they have certain areas that they are responsible for along the route to respond. Aircraft, as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll need aerial assistance to oversee the entire route during the overall process. DOT SHEP, SHEP is an acronym for State Highway Emergency Program. They would provide uh, service, uh, roadside assistance, if you will, for uh, disabled uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, also, DOT will have personnel and equipment uh, along the uh, traffic control points of I-26. And last but not least, the troopers and state law enforcement officers will provide line patrol assistance along the, uh, the uh, reverted route. And uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief Key. Thank you, Governor. My name is Mark Keel. I'm Chief of SLED. In preparation for response to Hurricane Florence, 444 state law enforcement personnel have already been deployed to the coastal regions. Those personnel have already had their intake briefs and are prepared to assist DPS uh, with the evacuation once it's uh, underway. Those personnel will also assist in a security mission of those areas evacuated. Sadly, we know that there are those who will try and take advantage of this situation to commit crimes. Whether it's price, price gouging, looting, or break-ins, I want everyone to know that additional law enforcement resources are already in place. We are dedicated to keeping the peace and to arresting those who choose to break our laws. Our state and local law enforcement officials will be out in force to aid in storm evacuation and in the security of those homes and businesses that folks have left and evacuated. I urge all citizens to cooperate with our law enforcement officials. And again, I want to emphasize that lawlessness during this period of time will not be tolerated. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Dave Wilson, DHEC. Thank, thank you, Governor. I'm David Wilson, Acting Director of DHEC. As with the rest of Team South Carolina, DHEC has been in preparation uh, for Hurricane Florence. We have uh, earlier today sent out a notification, a statewide uh, press release, asking dam owners to lower their water levels in their dams and in their impoundments to be ready for the heavy anticipated rainfall. 
I would go ahead and say that if you're an owner of a pond or a dam, whether it's regulated or not, it's always a good idea when we're expecting heavy rainfalls to go and look at your dam. If the pond's really full, go ahead and start lowering that so it can hold extra capacity from the rainfalls. As it relates to health care facilities and in support of the order that the governor issued for mandatory medical evacuation, we have been in communication and working with the health care facilities in the evacuation zones so that they could be prepared to implement and evacuate as needed. And then finally, we're ready to help man uh, special need medical shelters as those are needed for evacuees as they move from the coast. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Kim Stenson. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kim Stenson from the State Emergency Management Division. Uh, we've talked about the evacuation piece. Now we need to talk a little bit about uh, where people need to go. And evacuation shelters will be open uh, tomorrow once the evacuation begins. And they're open based on need, and they're open inland, obviously, from the coast. The shelter locations are available in a full list, updated live and in real time on scemd.org. That's our website and also in our South Carolina Emergency uh, Manager uh, mobile application. If you do decide to go to a shelter, and many decide to go to uh, family and friends, but if you do decide to go to a shelter, you need to consider bringing uh, blankets, pillows, and comfort items because they may not be initially available. Medicines, if you have any chronic uh, uh, conditions such as uh, high blood pressure and diabetes, any identification uh, documents that you might need, and then special food items if you have small children, if you are on a restricted diet. Uh, service animals are allowed in, uh, in some shelters, but not in all, well, I'm sorry, service animals are allowed in all shelters, uh, but there may be some shelters that do not accept pets. Uh, and they'll be noted on the website and you'll be able to see that real time uh, and also on our South Carolina Emergency Manager app. Uh, if you do show up at a shelter uh, with pets, the workers there will uh, try to work with you and see what accommodations they can make and point you in the right direction so that you can uh, take care of your pets uh, as well as yourself. Uh, we'll have a uh, couple things. One is we'll have a, our state uh, information hotline, the public information phone system will be open tomorrow. That's at 1-866-246-0133 and there'll be Spanish uh, interpreters that will be available. So that will be available to answer any questions in terms of the evacuation and the sheltering and any other questions you might have. Uh, just to repeat, though, go to our website at scemd.org. It's in disaster mode right now. You can easily uh, tap into disaster information, shelter information, uh, closing information, and also the same is on our uh, uh, mobile application that we just fielded here earlier this summer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Also, uh, Mr. Fred Choi with the Federal Emergency Management Agency is here with us. Also, I had conversations, uh, too, with, with Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina, and he, of course, and his, his team are willing to help and ready to help us. We're ready to help them to what extent we can. Uh, this, is a, this is a big storm. I also spoke to Governor, Governor Deal uh, and Nathan Deal in Georgia. And uh, he's ready to help us as well. So we, we've everybody's on deck, and we've got a great team here. But what we want to emphasize is there's still time to prepare and, and get moving. Even if you're not in the evacuation zones, if you're in the evacuation zone, you need to, you need to get moving uh, quickly. By as I say, noon tomorrow, you need to be moving. But uh, everyone else, there's still a lot of people going to need help, uh, and, and so if you're available to, to help. Uh, do that but but please get your batteries there will be lines down there will be all sorts of dislocations we know that we no matter where the hurricane hits we know it's going to hit the uh, somewhere in south and north carolina and they because of the size of the the, uh, the the hurricane because of the velocity of the winds and the amount of rain that's in it and the fact that it'll be moving slowly across land at a very high rate of velocity we will get a whole lot of water that we haven't seen in, in a long time. So there'll be plenty of work for everyone to do. Everyone, please be be prepared. Are there any questions that anyone has? Yes, ma'am. You said a million people will be affected. Is that a million residents only, or is that include those are, Those are evacuees. Some may be tourists. Uh, those uh, precautions are being uh, made now. Uh, Dwayne Parrish addressed that uh, earlier with Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. More reservations along the coast and, and people are canceling reservations and many people are leaving but the total 
total moving away from the coast will be somewhere in excess of a million people. That's why we want to we want to close these state offices uh, in, in that entire area and close the schools to get those people all off the streets and have those facilities, particularly the schools available for shelters. Will they remain closed until after the hurricane passes? They're, they'll remain uh, closed un until further notice as the, the shelters will re remain open uh, until we don't need them anymore, and, but it may be a while. Governor Lane reversal, that can be a tricky thing. It, it cannot go as smoothly as possible. What can you do? What extra steps are you guys taking it, to make it, sure it goes if people, as well as it can? If people will follow the signs and follow the instructions given by law enforcement, it'll be very smooth. It was smooth last time. Uh, we've, we know how to do this. Uh, as Director Smith said, it's, uh, it's set up. We know how to do it. It's, it's being implemented now. And it should be very smooth if everyone follows instructions of law enforcement. Yes, sir? Any plans to close USC? That, that's a state agency, yes, that will be closed. This is the fourth year we've dealt with a you know, major weather you know, issue. Um, do you think South Carolinians are taking this serious every single year? I think so. Just the, the fact that the good responses that we've had over the years indicates that, that uh, our people understand what's, what's at stake. They understand that it's, it's inconvenient. Living in South Carolina means we're well, living by the ocean, and if you're by the ocean, you have a chance of a hurricane. And it, the, if you look at those maps, you think, I think there's seven of them out there now, seven or eight in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and I think we have four in the Atlantic, and all of them, of course, are coming, coming this way. Uh, so, but, but this one is particularly big, particularly strong, and without going into all the details, the atmospheric conditions are such that there's nothing stopping it. A lot of times the, the high pressure that is now north of the hurricane as it comes from Africa across the Atlantic towards us is holding it down just like a, a wall would, would hold, like a rail would hold, hold a car on, on a racetrack. So it's coming right straight to us and when it hits the Gulf, Gulf Stream in warmer water it's going to rev up even more. So that's why people are so concerned about it. In addition to that, a lot of the soil in North South Carolina, South Carolina, had a lot of rain. A lot of the soil is almost saturated. If it's not saturated, it means the water won't sink in, but will flow off. And because the hurricane appears to be going to move slowly across ground as it goes, not in velocity, but in its uh, five, six, seven miles per hour, whatever it is, that means a lot of rain will be dumped on us. So this is a, this is a, big, a big hurricane. On hospitals, how many hospitals, I know this is probably a question for DHEC, yes. how many hospitals, medical facilities are affected, how many patients might be affected? Yes, sir. There are a total of 177 health care facilities that are impacted, uh, 19 hospitals, an additional five that are associated with correctional facilities. Uh, I would have to provide you to break down on the number of beds and people affected later. Governor, yes. when we talk about closings, for schools, what advice can you personally give to parents, to teachers, anything else that you can tell them as this is in effect? I would say this would be a very good teaching opportunity to get one of those brochures that are readily available online from the Emergency Management Division. And we have copies uh, here someplace. So they've got all sorts of illustrations and facts and figures and uh, say illustrations that, that show exactly uh, what's going to happen. But use this as a, as a teaching experience, both of what, how weather is and how hurricanes work, but also uh, how, how the government and private citizens work to protect each other and, and get people out of harm way, harm's way. And again, what break that down? School children at closing schools, what went into that? And state offices. They will close, they will not open back up tomorrow. State offices, except for essential emergency type personnel, and also, uh, but all schools, all public schools in those 26 counties will not open tomorrow. That'll keep those people off the road, open the roads up for people who are evacuating the, the coast, and also it will open up the schools for use for some, for use of the school buses, and also to use those schools for, uh, for shelters as, as, as need be. So we're, we're, we're taking it very seriously, as you can tell, and we've got a, we've got a great team to do it. With the interstate one way to Columbia, do you have any idea of the hotel's uh, availability for those evacuating so far? The, we, uh, Dwayne Parish of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism told us earlier today there are still hotel rooms in Columbia, there are Greenville and Spartanburg. I 
And there also there's a, uh, a, a horse uh, trials, an equestrian trial going on in Tryon, North Carolina. I think they have 800 horses there. So they have a lot of people visiting up in that part of the state. Which is, so that, that's adding, adding to the number of people there. But uh, that's one reason we want to have all of these schools open. So as necessary, we'll be able to, to put as many people up as possible. Governor, with all those schools closed, are there any plans in place to use those school buses to evacuate people at shelters farther north if needed, like we well, have in the past? That, that's exactly one reason we're closing those schools is to make those buses available as needed. All, all of them probably will not be needed, but some will be and they'll be available. So there are parts of the coastal counties that aren't in the evacuation zone? That's correct. What would you say to those people who live in a coastal county that isn't in the zone, what should they do? I'd say get prepared and uh, move. That's good. Most, most of those eight counties, most of the counties, some of all the counties, uh, some, some of uh, two or three, I think, no, Ori, uh, maybe some of Berkeley, um, maybe some of Dorchester, some of Jasper, are not, not included, but most of the counties, except for Ori, the majority of each county, all of Charleston, all of Beaufort, um, a lot of uh, Colleton, it, it's most of the coast and it goes way in. I'd say don't take a chance. This is not the time to take a chance because by the time you figure out that you shouldn't have taken the chance, it's too late to correct it. And so that goes back to what I'm saying. We do not want to gamble with a single South Carolina life. We want to be safe than sorry. And if the hurricane miraculously overnight decides to go elsewhere, then we can take corrective action. But we have, we have stood up our emergency response team. It's a lot easier to stand down than it is to get organized and stand up. But we're up, and we're going to stay up, and we're going to protect the people of this state. The evacuation starts noon tomorrow. What yes. time might DOT start closing things down so that people can't get out after a certain time? It will, they will not be able to, to go on that road after afternoon. Yes, sir. Can we okay, she'll explain. Uh, Director Smith, if you would, okay. please. Thank you. Uh, DOT would start, with respect to the uh, I-26 uh, lane reversal, DOT would start to set up uh, about 5 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, and we will start the, uh, the flushing phase uh, at 8 a.m. Just want to let you know, the flushing phase starts in Columbia. So if you're in the Charleston area, you're, you're okay. And as I mentioned earlier, since the flushing phase starts in uh, Columbia, if you're in front of that trooper, you can continue to travel to the uh, Charleston area. And as we pass an exit, we will close access to an entrance ramp. So basically, uh, 5 a.m. to set up, uh, the troopers will be in the road starting at 8 a.m., uh, starting to flush from Columbia to uh, Charleston, and we'll work our way down to the uh, I-526 interchange. But at noon, the gate will open in Charleston and they can get on and go back uh, on either side of the highway. That is correct. There are, uh, this is just an open-ended question for whoever can, but there's people that can't necessarily leave on their own. They don't have those means. Um, again, what do they need to know um, about how they will receive help getting out of these affected areas? Well, that's where the preparation comes in. Who would like to answer that? Go ahead. Uh, in any county, you can contact your county emergency management uh, office and they'll help you with that transportation and you can also call the public information phone system and uh, we can refer you out to somebody there as well. But the time to do that is now. You start making that plan. Can you say that number again? Uh, yes, it's 1-866-246-0133. Next question. So USC will be closed tomorrow morning yes. along with all the schools? Yes. Or whenever the hurricane? Yes. Okay. Until further notice. Any more questions? Thank you very much. As we hear things, we'll alert. Thank you. Cool.